Hi, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint Sip, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. Today we're going to be painting Shooting Star. I'm going to be sipping a little Chardonnay. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. The materials that we're going to be using today are a primed and stretched 16 by 20 canvas. Uh, you can get this at any of your local craft stores and you can even change up the size if you want, but I'm going to be using 16 by 20. I have a cup of water for washing my brushes. I have a paper towel for drying my brushes. And the two brushes I'm using today is a one inch wide bristle brush and a number three round synthetic brush. And then for my palette, I'm just using a disposable food tray. I'm using acrylic paints with a titanium white, cobalt blue, ultramarine blue, green oxide, and Mars black. And you can certainly change up the colors a little bit if you'd like to, but these are the ones that I'm gonna be using. And that is all we're gonna need for our supplies today. So for this first step, what we're going to be doing is the sky. The sky is going to be made up of white, cobalt blue, ultramarine blue, and black. It's going to come about four-fifths of the way down your canvas. You, you want to leave maybe about four or five inches if you're using the same size. I'm going to be starting with white paint. I'm using my bristle brush to do this um, step. So I'm going to start with some white paint. I'm going to kind of mark out where I want that um, sky to start at the bottom and I'm going to be going up and down with my brush stroke. I'm going to be using a good amount of white and I want this white area to be almost larger than I really want the light area to be because what I'm going to end up doing is blending it with that cobalt blue in a moment. So I've got this probably about, you know, more than half the distance if you were to cut this canvas in half it'd probably be you know eight inches wide so I've got this about eight inches wide across and then it's really coming up pretty high and then once I have a good enough area of white now I'm going to start to pick up the cobalt and white and I'm going to start on the exterior of my white section and you can see how I'm blending it in as I go and it doesn't have to be really uniform. This is meant to kind of emulate like the northern lights. Um, so it can certainly have some diversity in it. Um, but once you've got it nice and blended from one side to the other, then you can just continue to pick up the cobalt blue. And that's going to get it to go a little bit darker as it goes over to the right and the left. And I'm still just using the cobalt blue and white at this point, and I did not wash my brush between those two colors uh, because I want them to really kind of merge together and look like they belong together. So uh, at this point, I'm picking up more of that cobalt blue. I like to paint the edges or the sides of my canvas as I go along, so you'll see me sneak around the sides every now and again. And you can see I'm going below my, my desired um, line, that's okay because we're gonna be painting over it anyways. Um, I'm gonna go up on the top here, make sure I get some of this vibrant cobalt blue to show up at the top of this um, light area. My whole goal here is to have the center of my canvas being in through here, the brightest or lightest, so that way it becomes like the focal point of the canvas as we, um, as we put the other details on here. So once I get a good, um, a good showing of the cobalt blue, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start picking up that ultramarine blue. And again, I did not wash my brush before I went into the ultramarine blue. And I am going to get that color to blend right into the, the cobalt blue. And the ultramarine is a little bit more purpley of a color um, than the cobalt blue. So this is gonna provide a really nice and natural transition into the dark part of the sky, which we're gonna be getting into in a moment. And I'm bringing that cobalt or the ultramarine blue all the way down the sides, just to make sure I've got it really nice and blended. And if you find that you've got some vacant areas along the way, just 
bring that brush down in a really long and fluid um, brush stroke. And again, I'm gonna go up into this top region, get some of this uh, ultramarine blue to represent up here as well. We want it to really look like it's all connects to each other. And here, I'm just gonna kind of pull it down, make sure if I need to blend it in with any of the areas down here, I can just kind of pull them in. And then I've got this one last little section over here on the right that I'm gonna hit. Maybe I'll hit the sides of my canvas as I go along. And then there's one last little touch to this sky. I did mention that we were gonna be using black and you've noticed I have not used the black yet. I'm waiting for my entire sky to be finished or filled up with these blues and whites before I go into the black because I wanna make sure that this sky is exactly as I want it with all of my adjustments before I put black on my brush because once you get that black on there, if you wanna do any tweaks after that, you're gonna to have to wash and dry your brush. So I'm pretty content and happy with this, maybe just a little tweak here and there. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna start picking up black on my brush. Just kind of paint this out here. So I didn't wash my brush. I'm gonna pick up some black. I'm gonna line the top of my canvas with a good amount of almost a heavy, thick black right along the top. So you don't want it to dry too fast. You wanna be able to work with it. Once I get it lined up at the top, what I do is I take my brush and I almost hit the top of my canvas and this just kind of pulls this down a little bit. You want it to be kind of subtle. You don't want it to look like um, it's consuming the top of that canvas. So I'm just ever so lightly just kind of pulling down a little bit of this black. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to be using this same brush for the next step, but you do wanna wash it and dry it. So after you get a nice even kind of look going here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wash and dry my big brush in preparation for my next step. And that's just a matter of pushing it down to the bottom of your cup and spinning it around. That'll get those colors off. And then you just dry it on your paper towel and get ready for the next step. So for the next step, we're gonna be using that um, one inch wide bristle brush. Again, we're gonna be doing our first layer of the water. The colors you'll be using are white, cobalt blue, ultramarine blue, and black in that order. So I'm gonna start with white, and I'm gonna make myself a horizon line, which is gonna go right where at the, you, you need it to all be in your sky. So I'm gonna kind of make a nice even line going across here. If you want to make sure that you're kind of straight, or have it at the same height on from one side to the other. What I recommend doing is you can take your brush and any brush, um, whatever size yours is works, you can just hold it up to the side and figure out how high that mark is on that side and just bring your brush over to the other side. If it's not the same height, just make an adjustment. You can you know, make one side a little bit higher or lower. This will help you prevent you from having like a really slanted line. And then you just make your tweaks however you see fit. And once, oops, once you have that um, line on there, I'll add just a little bit more white. And if you can see some of your sky through that at this point, it's okay because we're gonna be painting over it anyways with your hills and stuff. So I've got my white paint on there. I've come down a little ways and now I'm gonna be using the cobalt blue and white get that to blend in a little bit. And the trick to getting a nice blend in this type of um, fashion is you go up into the previous color that you did and that will get you a nice blend. And I'm not using a very firm touch, I'm just kind of using um, my brush really almost kind of delicately so the um, paint lays nice on the top of it. And then now I'm just going into more of just the cobalt blue and as I move down my water, what I'll end up doing is my next color I'm gonna be going into is the ultramarine blue. And again, you'll see me go up into that previous color. That just gives me a nice even blend. And now I'm gonna go into my ultramarine blue. I'm gonna get some of that on there where it's blending into the cobalt 
And again, I did not wash my brush because I want these to blend in together. Um, and I'm still just picking up my ultramarine. I am gonna get that ultramarine to go all the way down to the bottom of my canvas, just so I um, have a good base when I go to put the black on and so it doesn't turn too, too black on me. And then once I have the um, paint all the way down to the bottom of the canvas, again, I didn't wash my brush, I'm just gonna pick up a little bit of black and I'm gonna put it down at the bottom of my canvas. So you wanna, this is in essence, a reflection of that sky. So you want to emulate the color order that you had in the sky. And then once you're all set with this, we are going to be using this um, flat brush again for the, for the next step. So you are gonna to wanna to wash it and dry it. So after you get this um, step nice and complete, you can wash and dry that um, bristle brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so for the next step, I'm gonna be painting the hills with black paint only, and I'm gonna be using my one inch bristle brush. So I take the black paint and I actually squish it on the side of my palette. That brings my bristles together. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be drawing a black line right above my water line. And this can be on the thicker side. It doesn't have to be perfect because we are gonna be painting other stuff around it. So if it's not perfectly executed, no need to worry because this is land and it doesn't have to be a super straight line. Um, so once I have that line in there, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna imagine how I want these little hills to look. I wanna keep the profile of it pretty low at, at the center of the canvas so that way the, um, the light in the middle of the canvas really pulls your eyes right into the center and becomes the focal point. And then I'm going to be just painting these hills in with black paint. I'm gonna do some on the left, and then I'm gonna come over onto the right-hand side, and maybe these ones are a little bit higher. You can really play with the, the height of them as you see fit based on whatever canvas size you use. If you use my same 16 by 20, great. You can keep them in the same ratio or just have some fun with it. Um, and then we're gonna be switching brushes to that small brush. So after you get these hills painted in, you can put the bristle brush in your water cup and you can take out your small brush, dry it on your paper towel, and just get ready for the next step. All right, so for the next step, we're gonna be doing the trunks of our pine trees. I'm gonna be using my small pointed brush and I'm gonna be using black paint only. Um, I, in essence, I'm using these more or less as what I refer to as place markers as opposed to trunks because I want these to be hidden at the end. So all I'm really doing is making a vertical line for these. You can do them all different heights. You can do them all different types of spaces um, between them. That's really up to you. Um, for this type of painting, I'm definitely going to be making some smaller ones in the middle and I'm leaving myself a good amount of space in the middle to again provide for the viewer to just dive right into the painting and get engulfed like in the middle of the painting. And I like mine to be all different heights so you can certainly see that I've got you know varying heights to it. Um, and then when, when I'm done with adding these tree trunks or place markers I'm going to be switching brushes back to the big brush um, it doesn't have to be super clean because we are going to be using it with black paint, but you just want to get it dry. So dry it off on your paper towel and get ready for the next step. Okay, so for the next step, we're going to be doing the branches on the, on the pine trees. We're going to be using our one inch bristle brush. We'll be using black paint. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to squish it in the side of my palette so I can kind of keep my bristles in control. I want these to be pine trees, so pine trees are notori notoriously pointy at the top. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be going down and out from that trunk with the black paint on my brush. So down and out, and on each one, I want it to get a little bit wider because pine trees are almost like a tall or a long triangle. Um, and I, you don't need to get it too, too thick at the bottom if some of that little 
um, trunk shows through at the bottom, so be it. If your trunk is pretty close to the edge of your canvas, you can certainly wrap those, those branches along the side of it. So I'm definitely just kind of going down and out. And what I'm gonna do for my next tree, I'm gonna do a little bit of a close up so you can see this process um, in, a, in a closer view. I'm just reloading my brush right now. I'm gonna start at the top, but I definitely wanna maintain the point to my tree. So I'm just going down and out from that top. And again, they don't all have to be exactly the same length. And if when you get to the bottom, you have a little bit of that trunk showing, great, because that is definitely what will happen in nature. And if you need to thicken up in the middle, you can certainly just dot that black in there. And then that's all it is for this first layer. If they start to hit one another, great, because again, that's what happens in nature. And then I'm just gonna keep going on to each one after that until I have all of my um, brand, or the branches done with the black paint. I'm gonna go right on to my next one. And again, I'm just kind of going down and out, down and out. And I'm just cruising along right now on this smaller one, you know, you just use the corner of your brush. It doesn't have to be perfect because Mother Nature has a way of adding some beautiful character, some inconsistent character to her, to her trees and stuff. So if yours don't look exactly like mine, no worries. And if yours are taller, or wider, or fuller, or you know, thinner, that's totally cool because that's what, that's what happens. Everyone's got a different shape. There are no two trees alike in this world. So, you know, just kind of go with what your brush is giving you. Be comfortable with it. Go fast. Sometimes when you go fast, it provides a little bit more of a natural look to it. And then I'm just kind of finishing up here. I, again, making them just a little bit longer at the bottom so they look more reminiscent of the typical pine tree that you're gonna see. And I'm just finishing up here at this point. And I am gonna be using this big brush with black paint for the next step. So you don't have to do anything for preparation other than just, you know, maybe take a sip and a break. All right, so what we're gonna be doing with, for the next step is the reflection in the water. I'm gonna be using my big brush. I'm gonna be using black paint. And this time I, I don't wanna use a lot of paint. So if, if you fear that you're not gonna be able to control it, what you could do is just take your paper towel and wipe it off a little bit because we don't need a ton of paint on there. And the goal here is just to kind of get a, a loose um, light layer of black that's gonna emulate kind of the shape of your hills and the trees. So what I like to do is I'm gonna start kind of in my center. I'm pushing my brush kind of left and right, and then I'm watching this line as I come down. It doesn't have to be exactly the same um, profile. Something similar will do. Um, and then I'm just gonna lightly kind of dust my brush back and forth, left to right. And you can see just because I'm dusting it back and forth, left to right, it doesn't cover it all the way 100%. And that's kind of what I want. We will be doing another layer of this um, water later, but this way I don't lose my um, separation line and I definitely have a good, um, a good idea that this is more of a reflection as opposed to another piece of land. And then as far as my trees go, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that same brush, I'm gonna come directly below at one of the trees and I'm just gonna go left to right and I'm gonna just make it more narrow as it goes towards that tip. And I'm gonna do that for each tree, but I'm gonna keep them in height order. So I know that this one's gonna be longer than that one, so I need to make sure my reflection reflects that it's a little bit longer. Same thing with this one. This one's taller than that one, so I'm gonna come directly below. And you might run out of room. I, I, I'm gonna run out of room for that, that tallest one, which is fine. So that one is taller than that one. And then for this last one, it's just gonna disappear off the bottom of my canvas. So I'm just going left to right, left to right, and it disappears. I'm gonna go and do the same thing on the right-hand side. So first I'm gonna do my 
um, silhouette kind of reflection of the, the hills themselves. And I want to make sure this one is maybe a little bit taller than this one, just to give it, again, that proper perspective. So if this one's here, I make this one just, of course, watch out for your wine. You don't want to, you don't want to spill that. Um, so I've got that reflection in through there. I'm going to dust my brush back and forth, left to right, not using a lot of pressure. This way I can certainly see a little bit of um, those watercolors underneath. Again, just going left to right. And then once I have that, that accomplished, now I'm gonna dip my brush a little bit back into my um, black. I'm gonna go in for the reflection of this tree and I'm gonna see where is it in relation to these trees over here. It's between this one and this one for the height. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go directly below. I'm gonna go left to right. And I know I have to stop between this one and this one, so my stopping point's gonna be right about here. So here I go, I'm gonna go smaller, smaller, stop somewhere between this one and this one. And then these last two are just gonna disappear right off, right off the bottom of my canvas. So I'm gonna go left to right, making it smaller, disappears. Left to right, making it smaller, disappears off the bottom of my canvas. And then the next step that we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be um, using our small brush. So after you get done with these reflections, what you can do is take that big brush, put it in your water cup, take out your small brush, dry it off on your paper towel and get ready for the next step. All right, so for the next step, what we're doing is the shooting star, which is the star of the show. Um, I'm gonna be using my small brush. I'm gonna be using white paint. And to ensure that I can get this almost in one fluid motion, I wanna make sure I have a good amount of paint on my brush. I do spin it on the side of my palette so that way I have a good amount and my brush is nice and pointy. And what I'm gonna be doing is I like to almost start it with a little dot and I'm gonna really kind of go fast. And as I'm doing it, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lessen the pressure on my brush. So that way it's gonna become thinner as I go up. And then if you have to, you can kind of tweak it just a little bit. Um, but again, the quantity of paint was what helped me to get that in one fluid motion. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna finish my stars by just doing a whole bunch of little tiny white dots all throughout my canvas. So you can use the same brush. There's lots of different techniques that people use to do these stars. Um, but for me, I just kind of like to bounce my brush all along. Um, I like small ones and bigger ones and little clusters of stars. You can put some between your trees. You can put some down in your water, which I'll do in a minute, but I'm just kind of getting a whole bunch up in the sky. Some people like to use like toothbrushes and flick the toothbrush at it so they have the millions of little tiny stars. Um, but you can kind of use whatever technique that you like. For me, I just kind of, for these type of paintings, I'll just take this, you know, my pointy brush and almost bounce it off of my canvas to give myself a variety of different, sh different sizes for the stars. And I also kind of scatter myself around the canvas. You'll notice I don't go systematically through it. Maybe I'll come down and do some in between the trees and then I'll come back up here and do a few. That way my brain doesn't put them into a consistent order. If I was to sit here and just go one dot, one dot, one dot, one dot, I'd have a line of dots um, and they'd all be the same size. So this way, because I bounce around my canvas, it really allows my hand and my brain to just be carefree and let them be different sizes and let them have different patterns to them, which is obviously what happens in our beautiful sky that we see. I'm putting a couple in between these trees. And then I'm gonna come down and I'm gonna put some in the, in the water because this water is meant to look like a reflection of the sky. And I'm not going crazy with it down here. I'm just kind of adding a few here and there just to kind of emulate the um, authenticity of the, the sky here. And then we are going to switch brushes back to that big brush. So after you get done with as many stars as you want, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the little brush away in your water cup and wash and dry that big brush in preparation for your next step. 
The next step that I'm going to be doing is I'm finishing the branches on the trees. I'm going to be using my larger brush, the one inch bristle brush, and I'm going to be using green paint. So again, I'm going to take that paint, I'm going to kind of squish it in the side of my palette to keep these bristle, bleh, bristles <laughs> under control. You say, try and say that as fast as I'm saying it. Um, and then what I'm doing is I'm doing the same kind of brush stroke I did on the first layer of the trees, only this time I want to keep some of that black showing. So I'm actually not going to do as much as I did the first time. And this time what I also want to do is do some going down the center of that tree. So it's a pretty similar brush stroke. I'm just going kind of down and out. Um, but I'm also adding a little bit down that center too, and I'm maintaining some of that black showing. You don't have to keep all of the black showing, um, but make sure you keep that pointy tip top on that tree, and definitely a little bit of green going down the center. That way you don't have it just looking like you took a comb and parted it left and right. This way you can certainly have um, the little variations of green in there. And if you feel like you've gone too bright or if you want a little bit more black back there, just put black on your brush and you can use a combination of the green and the black. Um, again, when I get to these tiny trees, the detail is not that important. Um, and of course, I just kind of made my pointy top to my tree not so pointy anymore. So I'm just going back and doing a little touch up there. And I'm just taking that green paint, adding a little bit to these trees, coming down the center a little bit. And again, sometimes the faster you go, the, the more um, natural it's going to look. And you can see that I usually always speed up. I start a little bit slower in the beginning, and then as I come towards these last two, I seem to catch my rhythm a little bit more and go a little bit faster as I go. Um, but you definitely want to hit a little bit at the top so it doesn't look like you left that top of the tree without without some branches and then just finishing up here and we will be using the same brush for the next step but you definitely want to wash it and dry it so after you get done with adding the green to your trees you can wash and dry that big brush in preparation for the next step all right so for the next step what i'm going to be doing is i'm using my big brush i'm going to be putting the final layer on my water and this is meant to just kind of smooth it out, make it not so rough looking and almost put like a beautiful glaze over the top of it. So the three colors I'm gonna be using are my two blues, my ultramarine, my cobalt, and I'll use a touch of the white also. Um, I don't use a lot of paint, so what I'm gonna do is just kind of dip the tip of my brush in the two blues just to get this going. And this is really a less is more kind of step so I have very little paint on my brush and I definitely want to bring it into some of these bare spots that I have created um, on the water. You want it to go all the way across. This is again just meant to be that like final beautiful like a highlighted layer on top of the water. You don't want to paint over or get rid of your entire silhouetted reflections that you have down there. So just a little bit of paint will really go a long way on this kind of step. Um, but my goal is to just kind of get it to be nice and smooth looking, my, my water to be nice and smooth looking. And again, if you feel like you've overdone it at any point, you can certainly bring back that, some of the black if you need to, bring back some of the white in through the center area. Um, this can definitely be a, a step that takes you a few minutes just to kind of get to look the way that you want it to look. Um, but I kind of sit here just for a minute, make sure I get everything the way that I want it to look, make sure I've covered up any dry looking spots. Sometimes when we do um, a step like we did for the um, black silhouette, sometimes it, it will get dry looking or it looks like you missed some of your canvas. So this way, this kind of fills out those spots, makes sure you've got a nice um, cohesive look through the whole thing. And if you need to add back a little bit of black, you certainly can, but just be careful because sometimes it will turn gray on you if you're unfamiliar with how much wet paint you have underneath. And then we have one more tiny little step after this, 
and it's going to be done with your small brush. So after you get this water to look ever so beautiful with a nice finished layer atop of it, you will put that big brush away in your water cup and you're gonna take out that small brush in preparation for your last step. All right, so the real last step to any painting is your signature. So I usually do mine in the bottom left or the bottom right corner. You can do a bright color or you can do a dark color, it depends on how bold or subtle you want it to be. You can do your initials, you can do your full name, you can put the date on it. Um, whatever you'd like for your identifying mark to be is cool with me. Um, and then that's the final step. So I hope you enjoy the process. I hope you dig your painting and I look forward to painting with you again next time.